the two-tier universe. Some time ago, I was listening to a year's worth of lectures on the life and ministry of Francis Schaeffer. And you can get these from the Covenant Seminary website. They also have more theologically geared courses that you can download for free, podcasts. In the process of listening uh, to this series, I was reminded of Schaeffer's teaching on the two-tier universe. And I thought it would behoove us to briefly uh, examine that together. The first thing to point out about the two-tier universe is what it is not. The universe which Schaeffer had in mind here is not the physical cosmos, rather it is the mental or epistemological world uh, which he had in mind. So how do we view how we come to know things? The basic idea is that the rose-colored spectacles through which much of Western society views the world are really bifocals. And, and this is uh, Schaefer himself uh, would not hold to this view, the two-tier view, but this is what he says other people hold to, so many other people, not, not everybody of course. But. Respectable things like science, mathematics, economics, history, perhaps even philosophy, why these are seen in modernistic ways. In these fields there is absolute truth, however inept we may be at finding it in practice. There are right and wrong answers. There are, there are right and wrong answers. There is ultimate meaning. Logic makes sense in this realm. But when we turn our attention from, the, uh, from this objective realm to perhaps a more subjective realm, that is when it breaks down. Morality or religion boasts of no absolutes, says the two-tier view. What works for me might not necessarily work for you. Truth is relative and all perspectives are equally valid. This realm is viewed post-modernistically. There are no right or wrong answers per se, and you just gotta have faith. Now, uh, Schaefer, I think, was onto something here um, in this observation. And what was true in the 60s, 70s, and 80s is even more true uh, today. You might even say that Francis was a prophet of sorts. While I hope this spiritual schizophrenia is not an accurate representation of all contemporary Occidentals, it certainly seems to be the majority report. At the very least, it is more popular today than it should be. So in a word, yes, uh, Mr. Schaefer was right when he taught that many Americans and Europeans tend to think in this way. The more important question, though, is, is this epistemology true? Modernism was too extreme in the direction of sola rationes, while postmodernity swung the pendulum too far in the opposite direction. And when something is less than rational, it is irrational. Relative truth is a contradiction in terms. The phrase relative truth is a contradiction in terms. Therefore, it can't be true. There can't be such a thing as relative truth. The baptism of nonsense doesn't make it any less false or any less meaningless. Even though you baptize it, it's still nonsense. And that's my main beef with the neo-orthodox uh, uh, theologians. I'm afraid that even in ethics and theology, we need to use our minds. And there is even absolute truth in, dare I say it, the field of aesthetics. I know that's a controversial um, claim to make, uh, but it happens to be the truth. If such a bivalent way of knowing is so deeply flawed, with knowing in quotation marks, one wonders why it is so popular. Where did, it, where did such a peculiar idea come from? And why does it seem so normal to us today? The zeitgeists of successive eras could be traced in great detail, uh, but there are three main points I wish to highlight. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> the first point is pseudo-tolerance. 
it is of course quite honorable not wanting to hurt anyone's feelings. Christianity is certainly not the only kid on the block. We ought to play nice with the other boys and girls. But uh, I thought ought was a relative term on the two-tier view. But I'll continue. Anywho, uh, as I was saying, it's commendable to be nice to those we disagree with. But notice that we really do disagree. We can't tolerate people that we agree with. Uh, we have to disagree with somebody in order to tolerate them, by definition. So I don't have a problem with true tolerance. My problem is instead with a fake tolerance, which says that we should tolerate everyone, and then whispers to the stage, so long as they adhere to the two-tier epistemology. The problem is not everyone does adhere to the two tiers. I, for one, reject it wholeheartedly. And if you are intolerant of me for that reason, you are not truly tolerant. This seemingly obvious fact seems to elude my two-tier friends. But the knee-jerk reaction that we should be nice to one, to one another is true enough. We, we should be nice to people, sure. Uh, we certainly should do unto others as we would have them do unto us, as a wise old man once said. Pluralism, then, is partly to blame for the ubiquity of the two-tier universe. What was the other point, I, the second point I wanted to highlight? Theological illiteracy. When big-name anti-theists can publish best-selling books about how awful the Bible is, how mo morally awful it is, yet every single passage they quote is taken without fail completely out of context, that should strike us as odd. When was the last time you allowed a person who had no formal training in brain surgery to operate on your head, or flown in an airplane piloted by a man who never went to flight school? Yet Bertrand Russell and Carl Sagan are the go-to guys for biblical exegesis? Question mark. Something is wrong with this picture. The fact that Christopher Hitchens writes for a newspaper somehow makes him an authority on ancient Near Eastern sociology? Uh, I don't, I don't uh, understand this. I appreciate the fact that not everyone is going to devote their lives to the academic study of the Bible, but it would be nice if people who know it's wrong to such a high degree of certainty knew basic facts about what they so vehemently disagree with. And if you don't understand what it is that you disagree with, then you really don't disagree with it. Uh, but it's not just the Bible. Uh, what is the first thing that I hear when I present the cosmological argument to somebody? Uh, they may say, oh yeah, well, if everything needs a cause, then so doesn't God. But this shallow kind of a response uh, betrays a profound ignorance of the most basic tenets of theology. And I really don't mean to sound condescending here. I hope you're not taking it that way. Uh, but you have to understand that many of the people on the Internet and elsewhere in real life claim to have been hardcore Christians. They pastored churches, uh, taught at Bible colleges. They read all the apologetics books. They spent years searching for God but couldn't find him. They couldn't take the cognitive dissonance of all the plethora of contradictions. Then you mention something really basic like the aseity of God and it's like they've never heard it before. Um, uh, th th there are things that I, that I don't know. Sure, I, I'm, I'm not all-knowing, uh, of course. Uh, basic economics, for example. It's not a shameful thing, I just haven't learned about it yet. So if you don't know a lot about God or religion, theology or the Bible, that's okay. As I've been trying to make clear, I'm not being derogatory. That is not my intention. Rather, all I'm trying to do is illustrate very clearly how illiterate much of our culture is to theology. All right, I'm out of time, so stay tuned for part two. Thank you.